Holly Meese. I was born in Chicago, Illinois, um, 1960. 2019, I was still uh, working full time at the hospital that I worked at, and um, my husband also was was working um, as well, and we were uh, empty nesters. So uh, we, you know, uh, enjoy the things going on in Sioux City. I think things started to change maybe in the middle of the beginning of spring, middle spring type uh, in 2020. Um, we started having to wear masks and um, we saw more and more patients coming in with COVID. Uh, we had to designate a certain floor for COVID patients. Then things really started to um, unravel, uh, I would say, um, probably probably in the middle of April. Um, we had a couple kids that were graduating. My oldest son was graduating from law school and my youngest daughter was graduating from undergrad at Loyola, uh, Chicago, and we had to cancel all those plans uh, for their graduations. And I had had a week at the end of April and the first week in May taken off for those. And um, I stopped off at work uh, shortly before that to pick up something in my locker and I walked into what I would consider a MASH episode. Our whole department had turned into um, an ICU because uh, ICU could not accommodate all the COVID patients, so they were spilling into my department. I worked in a phase one post-anesthesia care unit. Then I felt very guilty and called my manager and asked if there was um, anything I could do to help out. And apparently um, one of our nurses uh, that works the night shift had taken a leave of absence. And she said, I have a, um, a week of 12-hour night shifts, <laughs> which I've worked nights for 30 years. So, um, but I, I committed to it. Um, only to realize that um, the, these were patients that um, were um, a little bit beyond what we were used to taking care of. Um, uh, my second assignment, they were going to give me three intensive care patients to take care of, and I, I just told them that that wasn't safe. That's pretty much what our department turned into was an intensive care unit. I also remember that's the time I got an app on my phone for Starbucks <laughs> because <laughs> I needed a little food therapy and I would my routine would be to drive through Starbucks and and get a coffee, uh, realizing that that's really the only thing that I was able to drink or eat during the whole day. I was my anxiety was so bad that I just I couldn't even eat. Of course, we didn't get breaks anyway. So I do remember a terrible, terrible shift one time. Um, I had an uh, intubated patient in one room, and uh, I had another patient that I was weaning off a medication drip. And I felt so bad because time had gotten away from me that um, I totally missed ordering dinner for him. I asked him, where can I get some dinner for you? And he said, well, I really like townhouses. So I said, let me order you some dinner. But I, I felt a lot of times coming home from work very deflated. Um, it was unsafe. I didn't feel like I was able to um, give the patients the care and the time that they needed. Um, I started losing weight. I started just having impending doom when I woke up in the morning realizing that I had to go to work to do this and I told my manager I, I felt like I just had to take a leave of absence. I just felt very disappointed and unsupported. Um, I they did not honor my short-term disability, and um, I do remember reading an article in the paper about our leadership feeling that at no point nurses were overwhelmed with the work that they had. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a time when nurses were being celebrated as heroes, but I felt very short-changed and um, unsupported by my own leadership. I do remember just going out for more walks and taking advantage of being outdoors and just really appreciating nature more and just the area that we lived in. And, and one, one day, um, I just, I just ended up driving to Okaboji for breakfast. <laughs> So 
Support for Facing a Changed World, an oral history of the COVID-19 pandemic, comes from the Margaret Ann Martin Everest Foundation, the Kind World Foundation, Humanities Iowa, the friends of Siouxland Public Media, and listeners like you.